All righty, folks, it is time to catch up with Matt, the mortgage guy. And I don't know about you, but the first thing I want to ask is I made a call yesterday on the daily financial news after the 30 year mortgage spiked to over 7% that I thought in two or three very short days, we would immediately go under 7%. So Matt, I know it's only late Wednesday and I have till Friday. Where are we at mortgage rates uh, today? What, Your bet reported? is looking good. Your bet is looking good, Mike. I think we're down to six nine two. Um, yes. use, using that that average, and uh, um, you know, generally what happens when there's a big market mover like we saw, um, all all the feedback I'm getting, and I've seen enough times to to understand it's it's good feedback is like give it a couple days. There's usually oh, a bounce back, back of exactly. some sort. You know, the market overreacts. And then it it traces back a little bit. And so um, wherever we jump to 702, 704, um, we thought it was going to bounce back. Currently, for people that are um, in a position where something doesn't have to close in the next two or four weeks, um, a lot of people are waiting. Mm. The CPI report that comes out next Friday, the 13th, or I'm sorry, it's it's is it coming out on the 13th? I th usually CPI comes out Tuesday. I think PPI is Friday, but yeah, I could be I meant, wrong. I meant I meant Tuesday the thirteenth. I don't know where. Yeah, I was gonna say where Friday. You you watch a scary movie recently? Oh no! So Tuesday the thirteenth is a day where yeah, we hope to see some relief in mortgage rates. And so, um, you know, while I'm not like a big float and wait and see what happens with mortgage rates for now. And especially yeah. the stuff I looked at on Monday and Tuesday to yeah. lock. I'm like, let's let's, let's give wait. this overreaction some time to bounce back. Let's if we've got another week to wait, wait for that CPI number, which hopefully is yeah. more data trending in the direction yeah. of it's, rates coming it's down. Probably too early to get this information, but one of the questions I had when I saw rates spike to seven was was really simple, right? What's the consumer gonna do? Because when rates spiked to seven, I I could see consumers having one of two reactions. One is, oh my God, they're going up again. We're going to eight. I got to move fast. Or the other one could be, ah, oh, this stupid game is rigged. I'm not playing. I'm out. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you had enough time to kind of get a feel for either of those. Did either of those maybe happen or not? You know, I, I feel like... uh you know, the, the rate shock stuff has, has kind of run its course. And I think that most consumers are, are somewhat immune to. <laughs> you know, it was eight. Who cares if it's seven? <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, and like you said, it's a little bit too early to tell this, this week's number for mortgage applications was up 8%. And, and we continue to see more and more applications, more and more people coming, um, you know, from a purchase application perspective, will next week's number be down? I don't think so. I think that yeah. the, the consumer um, has come to grips with it. And, you know, six and a half to seven isn't enough of a, a jump to really affect that. But um, yeah, like you said, some people that that's the upward trajectory is what causes them to actually act versus- Yeah, get off the, the sidelines, right? I mean, we saw that in 22 right when they broke four, a lot of people came off the sidelines going, Oh my God, they're, they're really serious. Right. They're really raising rates. So yeah, good yeah, for it'll be them interesting. they got something in the force. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So again, I think mortgage is interesting. I do agree with you. CPI will be interesting next week. I haven't taken the time yet to look at expectations. Uh, but as I recall, what was called the base effect last month was really small. This one's actually quite big. So we might see a noticeable drop. Uh, in CPI. And again, I haven't looked at the data yet. I do that over the weekend, but uh, that's just from memory. So it'll be interesting to watch. Uh, you shared a very interesting chart with me. I think it was via text uh, that I'm hoping you have because it, it really goes back and looks at housing over years and really does. Well, I'll let you summarize. What is this chart we're looking at? Yeah. The chart is basically saying what happens in a 10 year time horizon to mm -hmm. your home value. And so okay. it gives us all the way back to 1942. 42. Bought, yeah, 1942. 42. Wow. So okay. we've got, you know, 80 years of data. Well, I guess it ends at 14 because we got to see 10 years out. So right. we call it 70 
plus years of data where how much is that house worth in 10 years? Right. And okay. it's really, really cool. Um, and, and it's maybe fun for the viewer to guess, like how many times between 1942 and 2014 do you think you could have bought a house and it be worth less 10 years down the line? Because mm. home values go up, they go down. Yeah. And that's kind of the narrative for folks. I, I, you know, I got to tell you, I would have guessed zero. I could not imagine a time where I bought a home in say 72 and it was worth less than 82. Cause that's what we're doing in this chart, right? Right. We're basically we're buying it in a year at the median price. And then we're fast forwarding a decade. And what I think you're telling me, and these are in nominal terms, right? These are not inflation adjusted. Correct. Correct. Just nominal. Yeah. So nominal terms, I'm going to guess zero. Okay. times this happened which is close nah, sure. not, so it's not zero <laughs> very, very close um if if you guessed the one time that matt the mortgage guy bought his first house 2006 that was the the one year um shows you what a real estate genius and and timing of the markets uh guru i am uh, well hold on time out i don't know that that's i think what it's saying is wait a second Oh, so 2016. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Right. And so, so basically that's, it's the value change, the, the green line down the middle of how much it changed 10 years later. The, the oh, far right is got for it. every hundred thousand, what was that house worth? And so, um, you know, so if you bought a house in 2006, in 2016, that same house is worth 97 grand. Per hundred thousand. So you lost 3% is what Correct. it's saying. Correct. Got it. Got it. And and All really right. five, six, and seven were, were years where it was flat for all intents and purposes, where you bought it and a decade later, it was worth the same, you know, up five, down three. To me, that's relatively flat. Sure. In, you know, you know, it'd be interesting to do too, Mike, is look at the average. Because if we just look at these numbers, there's the drastic... Yeah. I hope, I hope, I hope everybody bought in 2012. That's what I, hope. yeah. <laughs> I mean, imagine just like everything you bought in 12 doubled in value in the next decade. That's, that's a pretty good deal, but you could do the same thing. Look, if you bought 96, 97 or 98, that also doubled in value over the next decade, a hundred uh, percent plus. Oh, but you look um, at the sixties to the 78, there's a whole run of a deck or nine years of doubles. Wow. Wow. Yeah. A bunch, well, that's, a bunch. Two, that's 130%. 74? Woo. Yeah. Seven, 70? Se oh, my goodness. <laughs> Damn baby boomers. Yep. Yep. And so it's interesting because I think that for, for a lot of people, especially in oh, primary. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, just because I know 1981's the most unaffordable year ever. Folks, yeah, 1981 is the most unaffordable year ever. It went up 65%. That's mind boggling to me. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, I, I have this conversation a lot because California real estate is its own animal and people are like mm -hmm. cash flow this and, and whatnot. Like you, you hold it for a long period of time. Real estate does good things for you. Mm -hmm. What you owe goes down. It appreciates and it goes up and there's some tax benefits along the way. It's not a get rich quick scheme, mm -hmm. but you know, for somebody who buys a starter home in some parts of California and sees 40 or 50% over a whole decade, uh, and, and a decade goes by, I think about the first house I bought in 06. I can't believe it's been 18 years this year, Mike. Like that yeah. went by so fast that, you know, you, you are going to see hundreds of thousands of dollars in appreciation. Um, by just holding on to an asset, which, oh, by the way, the bank will generally give you 90, 95, 97% of the money to do it. You only got to yeah. put a little bit of your own skin in the game. Yeah. It, this is something I did with Jason Hartman back in the day or, you know, a couple of months ago. Let's just take these numbers and assume you put 20% down. What does that mean? That means you take every number on this board and multiply it by five. Pretty good. So in 1998, you're down. You would have been up 500 percent on your down payment. Right. That's just just simple math. And Pretty crazy. The, the funny part is too is is the primary residence example 
where I think the last time I looked, the average down payment for a first time home buyer was 8%. So, I did. I saw that too. Know, 8%. Yeah. Right. So, so we can, we can multiply these numbers by 12 and say, you know, you you're, you're, yeah. you're one twelfth. <laughs> That's of, ridiculous. Of, of the down payment. <laughs> so buy a house and you might get a 1200% return in a decade, which like, listen, home ownership isn't all sunshine and rainbows. There's going to be repairs oh, going to be not. that. But if you put that up against buying a Range Rover and having a, nah, a Range Rover. Yeah. $1,172 a month payment. Like, and, yeah. and that, I, I spoke at something this past weekend, Mike. And so it, it's fresh on my mind. What I talked about, what I think resonated with people, um, choices you make along the way when you're in uh, different stages of your life where you're where you're making a good living drastically yeah. affect. It's all choices. Yes. What yes, you can yes. do later in life, right? And And the same people with the same income, but better choices, are, are the ones that can take the trips later in life. The ones that um, aren't trying to scramble and figure out what the heck they're going to do to pay for long-term care or things like that. You know, it's not even drastic sometimes. It's just like, you know what? I don't need a brand new car. An $800 uh, car payment's not a good idea. Let me buy one that's five years old. Let me, yep. you know, do what I can to protect my credit score, buy a home, and, and, and hold on to that versus, you know, irresponsible financial decisions that, you know, disallow me to, to get into a home as soon as I'd like that kind of stuff. Um, I'll, I'll never get tired of trying to help people navigate right. that because it's, it's, it's important and it changes people's lives. Yeah. This is amazing stuff. Um, well, I'll try, I try to put this in the show notes for folks if they want to take a look at this. Um, what else is going on in mortgage, right? Uh, do we is the streamline? Did that get extended? No. What's going on? With California Dream. What's going on? Yeah, streamline went away. We've got refi one hundred. So rate and term mm. conventional deals. Keep an eye out. I think the best advice, and I got um, this from somebody else, is you know get with your favorite mortgage broker who you like and trust, even if it's not the time to refinance have an idea of like, okay, when it gets to six and a quarter, when it gets to yeah. five, nine, nine, and you can pin that with the broker, you could even put yourself an application in and have all the docs ready. It's, you know, rates have been relatively volatile. I just, what- Just what a I'm, wee bit, just a wee bit volatile. Yeah. What I'm seeing right now, Mike, is really interesting. You know, there, there's a lot of people out there that are optimists and it's like, well, if it's this good today, it'll be better next month. It'll be better than that the month after. I literally talked to a guy about a refinance that will save him $550 a month. And wow. the thing about that is if it makes sense and it breaks even in less than a year, I think you do it because who oh, knows? Less than a year? Absolutely. Who knows what's going to happen? In this guy's eyes, Maybe in three months, it'll be 650 a month, but maybe not, right? And so- As we saw, yeah. Right. Uh, you know, you take what you can get and you don't all, I mean, that was, uh, it, it's hilarious to me to think about, Mike, like all the conversations mm -hmm. where, you know, 275 wasn't enough. Maybe the rates will get to two and a half. Or I'm looking at a 15 year, at two and a quarter. Will they get under 2%? Can I get 199? And uh... I have a specific person in mind that was looking for, I think it was- like two and a half or lower on a 20 year fixed rate loan. I must have talked to them and quoted them every month for a year, a year and a half, March or April of 22, when things started to go up and they went the other direction. I remember reaching out and being like, listen, we, you never got what you wanted. You've, you've sat and, and he was in something like a four and a half. And so like the 275 made all the sense in the world, but it, what, it wasn't quite to where he wanted it. I don't know if he ever did anything. I think he's still in a four and a half. He's probably percent. in a four and a half. Yeah. Right. So don't uh, let that be you. And, and that's the, it's the fine balance, right? Is like, don't be suckered by a kid in a call center who's trying to sell you, mm -hmm. but also don't be so risk averse or so, you know, yeah. hands off that you don't do anything for 12 or 18 months because inaction costs you sometimes more than more than action i agree i think one of the things you said that i will fully support is you should reach out to the mortgage broker that you know like and trust just to figure out what number makes sense for you 
For some of you, it's six. For some of you, it's five and three quarters. Some of you might be six and a quarter. I have no idea. But you know what? You should know. You should know what the number is. If they wanted to reach out to you and have that conversation, how would they do that? Go to greatmortgagebroker.com, fill out that form. If you want to run something quick by me, I've been telling folks, matt at mtmg.com. For some people, that's easier. Um, if if you fill out a form at greatmortgagebroker.com, you're getting connected straight to the team. We've got it really dialed in now where everybody gets the updates. Everybody knows what states they cover. They should get back with you within a couple hours. Um, that's a lot easier than maybe sending me an email where it's 24 hours before I see it. But greatmortgagebroker.com, matt at mtmg.com. We're happy to help. We're going to give you the device. We're going to let you track it, right? Yeah. A lot of times, um, you know, I, I don't have a call center full of people that are pounding 200 calls a day. So right. we'll have the 10 minute discussion. We'll realize, okay, it's got to have a five in, in front of it for it to make sense for you. Check out Mortgage News Daily. Just have a yep. rough idea where things are at and then reach out to me. Hey, Matt, you know, I know this is just a nationwide average. What does it look like for me? Wanted to touch yep. base and, and go from there. There you go, folks. Greatmortgagebroker.com. That is the place to go. Matt, you're amazing. And you are going to be at the Vegas event, right? I am going to be at the Vegas event. I'm super excited for the whole weekend. I'm excited for the added uh, free party with, with Ryan Pineda at his office. So flying in Friday morning, I'm going to be hanging with you uh, at Ryan Pineda's office, hanging out with all our ORAT friends all weekend. Um, gonna so it's going to be going to be a good time. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Yeah. Thanks, Mike.